on this episode of the Naturist Living Show, Nude Volleyball. of the Naturist Living Show is brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. At Bear Oaks, we offer traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Free your body, free your mind. www.bearoaks.ca Ah, volleyball. In nature's circles, it's really become ubiquitous. I mean, it doesn't matter which club you visit, uh, whether it's a small little member-owned club or a large resort, they all seem to have a volleyball court. In fact, if you go back and you look at images from the 30s and 40s, they were playing volleyball back then. Um, It's really synonymous with naturism, even in a textile world. You know, I remember watching uh, episodes of the show MASH on television, and uh, Hawkeye was always poring over his nudist magazines, and often he was uh, salivating over the nude volleyball. And it's a textile that's apparently uh, appealing and potentially sexual, especially to males, the idea that... uh, Women in particular would be uh, bouncing and hitting the balls and running around and prancing around nude while playing volleyball. Of course, the truth is different. Uh, Volleyball is is a very hard sport, but it is one that's a lot of fun and a lot of people can play. And so I decided to interview Peter Allison, who organizes the uh, tournament at Bear Oaks. He's been a long-time volleyball player. Not just a player, of course. Now he's organizing the tournament. But he has played volleyball at uh, naturist events all around North America. And so he's really an expert in the field. So what follows is my discussion with Peter. Well, in many ways, um, volleyball uh, initially brought my family to naturism. We used to play volleyball quite regularly at a clothed um, establishment. And one fellow came in with a uh, shirt and it was from a previous volleyball tournament, and it had uh, nude people playing volleyball. And I said, well, that's a fascinating shirt. Where did you get that? And uh, the fellow told me, well, I got that at a, a nature's volleyball tournament. And I said, wow, doesn't that hurt, you know, if you're diving for the ball or something like that? <laughs> Which, uh, incredibly, is the, type of, is the question I get for most people straight off. And, um, and the answer was no. And he told me that a volleyball tournament was coming up shortly. So we headed out with my young son, and my wife um, to see a volleyball tournament at the Four Seasons um, Nature's Resort, and uh, we really uh, we really enjoyed watching it. And I really wanted to get out there and play because I love volleyball. And uh, so the uh, I did go to a tournament, and that, my first tournament was the uh, Sunny Glades tournament, and it was uh, it was a great deal of fun. Never uh, never had so much fun. Uh, we met some great people. And I just thought, wow, this is the sort of thing I could spend my entire summer doing. Um, and I thought the big problem was that we just didn't have enough volleyball tournaments in the naturist area. And definitely volleyball brought um, my family into, uh, into naturism. But once we got there, um, the fact that there were other children for our kids to play with, and there are, my kids just loved the whole experience of running around with the other kids in the nude And uh, the whole social aspect, sitting around the campfire, playing the guitar after you play volleyball, um, the whole team thing, the camaraderie, um, it was just a great experience. What should they expect? Do they need to be a good player? If they've never played before, will they feel out of place? Uh, What happens? What's it like? Well, that, that's a good question. I, I came to Naturist Volleyball and volleyball in general being a very bad volleyball player. I, was, uh, I never played on a volleyball team before I got into uh, that indoor volleyball. They, and uh, when I came out to Naturist Volleyball, they had many levels. They had an introductory novice level. And I was quite surprised to find out I was actually uh, good enough to excel beyond that. I started in the novice plus level. And um, there, who are a bunch of very forgiving, uh, fun-loving type volleyball players. They take volleyball very seriously. 
as do um, all the levels. And you'll have, um, in the Ontario area, you also have a B level and an A level. Uh, it would be nice if we could get enough people together that we started up maybe a few more levels. But um, And some tournaments tend to be smaller, so they'll, they'll have less levels. But a knowledge of how to play volleyball is definitely not a prerequisite of getting into a volleyball tournament. What happens? How long is it? And what happens at the tournaments? Well, um, the way we format the tournament, the, the, the simplest tournament that you have out there usually lasts a weekend. And uh, so that would be something like the Four Seasons Tournament is concentrated just around a weekend. Um, some of them try to uh, spread out over several days. So if you look at the Sunning Glades Tournament, you have um, a Friday event and then they go Saturday and Sunday. At Bear Oaks, we try to move over multiple days. Uh, and the main tournament um, goes over a weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday. So the Saturday is round-robin play. First, you, you either show up with your teams or you show up without a team, uh, sign up as a single, and then it's my job to try and find out the right fit for a team for you or people who need players. And invariably, everybody gets to play. And uh, then so you spend the whole day on Saturday uh, playing games and watching the other games, cheering people on, talking to people about volleyball or anything else, learning some new things, learning some new techniques. And then after you finish playing that day, that's kind of your placeholder. You, you look at how many wins you had that day. And that's your placeholder for the following day. Um, in which you um, play your playoffs, which are generally double elimination. So you still get a lot of play even in the second day. And so it's just great exercise. Um, still lots of time for breaks in between games just to uh, socialize and have fun. But what we try to do at the, uh, at the Bear Oaks Tournament is we offer a number of other tournaments um, over the days. And we have one all-day tournament called a King and Queen of the uh, Beach Tournament. Everybody gets to play with a different person every game. And what happens is every time your team wins, you as an individual get a point. And those points are added up at the end. And the, and the people who have the most points at the end, they're considered the winners. So maybe the top eight people of all the people who are playing, if you have maybe 20 or 25 people playing, the top eight get a prize or something. Um, so, and it's a great deal of fun and you always get surprising winners because you'll find that certain people have never played volleyball before end up just playing with the same, the right people all day, even though they're different people and they get a lot of wins and they end up being in the winner's circle. And, uh, so it's a, it's fun whether you're a beginner or whether you're a more seasoned player. For those people who aren't quite into volleyball, there's actually a lot of social activities. We get a lot of spectators. Um, who uh, at Bear Oaks, we have a great playground. So people will come and the kids will just play on the playground. Um, we even have a mini kids tournament where the kids just basically throw the ball over the net a few times and then they, get, they all win a prize. So they have fun. Uh, we try to come up with a number of other children's activities. We have campfires in the evening. We have uh, a band that comes in the last couple of years. We have a, we have a pig roast. Um, and you can just generally enjoy the, uh, the, the Bear Oaks facilities because they have this great lake um, where, you know, for swimming. And they have um, um, just, you know, your hot tub and your pool if you want to enjoy that. And they have other activities going on at the same time because they have people playing patonk or uh, people just riding their bikes around or just going for a hike in the woods or whatever. So there's lots of uh, opportunities, mainly the draw during a volleyball tournament, unless you're the real hardcore volleyball players, is the social aspect and not really the play. And um, I personally always felt that, um, volley that, that naturism, you know, you'll get people who come and, they, and you know, they're nude and they'll, they'll suntan. And I'm not the type of person who can sit still. I got to be moving around doing something. And volleyball gives me that opportunity. And I, I think the fitness aspect is, uh, is an important aspect to me too. You get outdoors, you move around, you do things, um, you participate with other people. And uh, that's what I think really shines about an event like a volleyball tournament. Now, naturism and volleyball is almost a cliche. You know, nudist volleyball, nude volleyball player. It's a, cl it's a joke almost in the textile world because – but it's true. It's so common. I mean, there is – I've never been to a naturist club anywhere that doesn't have a volleyball net. Uh, why do you think – and it's always been. You look back at pictures from the 30s and there's a volleyball net and they're playing volleyball. Why do you think that volleyball is so common, so popular – uh, so ubiquitous within the naturist community, more probably than anything else that I've ever seen in the world. 
I don't think not having your clothes on has anything to do with why it would make volleyball a good sport. Me personally, I, I find it very hot to uh, play in clothes, and I find it very refreshing to not have my clothes on when I play volleyball. But what specific about volleyball attracts people? I was kind of thinking that you, the, nature is they have a limited amount of space. So football might be more difficult because you need you know a full football field. Or um, even tennis is difficult because you need your, your cement court and stuff like that, although there's a lot of nature as tennis players. But volleyball, you just kind of set up a net in the middle of the lawn and everybody just starts hitting balls over it. it it's very simple. It gets people off their feet. And, and you know, um, it doesn't take a lot of skill um, to play a, a basic volleyball game. You throw 12 people on the court, six people on either side, and they just start hitting a ball over, and people just have a great time. I, you'd probably find the same thing in a non nature environment too. Um, but I think those people would be a lot hotter because they'd have to wear clothes while they're playing. So. And uh, there's nothing better than after you've played on a beach volleyball court and you've just gone sand absolutely everywhere but not stuck in your pants. But right afterwards, what you do is you run and you jump in the lake and all the sand's off you. You come back out and you're cool, you're refreshed, and you're all ready for your next game. Try that at, a, uh, at a, an establishment where you had to keep your clothes on um, because you'd have to worry about showering first to get all the sand off of you before you could get into uh, the pool. Or perhaps you could jump in the lake, but then you'd have to change because your clothes were all wet. You couldn't go back on the sand again. And plus you had the sand all stuck in your pants in the first place, which is god-awful uncomfortable. Uh, it's, uh, it's just terribly uncomfortable um, having sand stuck in your clothes. So um, if you take all those factors in, um, playing volleyball in the nude is perfect. You've been to Whitethorn, and Whitethorn is sort of uh, the mecca of nature's volleyball. Why is that? What's, why, why is Whitethorn the ultimate, and what's it like? Actually, now come to think of it, our very first volleyball experience was Whitethorn, in which we played, my wife and I. Um, we were encouraged that this was the best experience, even though we had, we weren't big volleyball players at the time and we had never been to a tournament. Um, we went to the, uh, to the white thorn tournament and we were told, you know, there's going to be 1800 people there and all they are, they're just friendly, they're different people and you're going to meet people that you like. And we had such a great time. Definitely the social aspect once you get there it outweighs the, uh, the entire tournament. But I'm telling you, there are very serious volleyball players. You get uh, double-A players, people jumping up higher than you could ever believe, hitting the ball around. Like It is a spectacle to watch people of this quality play. But then you go down to the novice level, and people are just having fun, getting the ball over the net, having a good time. And then you have great evening activities. You have your, you have your dances. You have people playing guitar around the campfire. Um, you have people just gathering in little groups and just talking about their common interests. And, and everybody's just so open. If you go to the average campground where you might have 1,800 people, you probably never talk to anybody else. But here, you are, there's, um, you're talking to people nonstop. And a lot of the greatest conversations conversations go on in the shower or in between games when you're trying to wash the sand off right and you're and you're and you're talking to your neighbor and and uh about um about what's gone on during the day and just you know naturism in general while you're taking a shower i can't believe what quality conversation you can actually have with people in the shower it seems like such a waste of time that we have to spend that time alone on the average yeah, White Thorn is really big. Um, we couldn't believe it when we first arrived the first time. Um, tents were up against each other. It was like going to Woodstock or something like that. It was there's just um, one uh, camper after another, one tent after another, and people are, are just shoved really close. and And we went with it with a group from Ponderosa, and uh, they had an area that they take every year, and they just kind of. They, they block it off, and they saved a spot for us. They knew we were coming in, and they had to move some cars all the way. It was almost a covert, secret spot for us. Um, but where you go, you, you move from area to area, and the different areas represent different people from different areas or different people of different interests. But you could just walk in, and they'd be super friendly. They'd be offering you some food, maybe some drinks. They'd be talking to you about their own interests. Um, but you, you, just, you could walk and walk and walk, and there's just more people and more people and more people, and it's just unbelievable how many people are there. It's 1,800 people come to actually play the game of volleyball the year that we went there. With 1,800 people, how does that work? How many games, how many courts, how does that work? How, does, how is it organized? Okay, they have 
a lot of courts and they have preferences too. Like if you like sand volleyball, they have multiple sand volleyball courts for different levels. If you like playing on the grass, they have multiple grass volleyball courts, um, which range uh, from novice to novice plus to, to a B level. And they have uh, a B level and kind of a B plus level playing on hard courts and hard court volleyball, although you might think sounds scary in the nude, it is, uh, it is a great game. You can just jump higher. You can grab onto the ground more. So if you're really getting into competitive volleyball, that is a great way to play. And, um, and then you get your double A and triple and triple A players or your A and your double A players, um, playing on those courts. And it's just a uh, great sport to watch, but, um, they have enough courts set up there that you can accommodate all these different levels and all these different people. And fairly smoothly, you get into quite a number of games during the day. And yet there's still lots of time to, uh, to have fun and socialize. Now you've told me that there's non naturists who go there to play because it's so good. Um, there are non naturists who go. There was uh, there's a Canadian varsity team that had been there and uh, um, quite a few years. And uh, there's some American varsity teams that show up, and uh, they are not naturists, but they are nude for the uh, for the tournament because that is a requirement. You must play in the nude. It doesn't matter how uh, warm or cold it is, and uh, you you never get any arguments on that point. There, uh, it's pretty clear. Um, but the, uh, the quality of these players, they will come back every year and they will, uh, and they will play and, uh, they'll play and they're just a uh, joy to watch. So, uh, you just, uh, had a tournament at, uh, around Christmas time indoors in the London area. Tell us about that. Well, we, uh, we've been talking about that for, uh, for a few years. Um, a friend of mine who's, uh, who's a Sunny Glades member and myself had been talking about um, putting on a tournament at our indoor beach volleyball place here in London. Um, and we just decided that, um, okay, this is the year. Let's just put it out there. So we talked to a lot of people in the summer, and people were interested, gave me a list of names who wanted to show up. So I made an email list from that, and from that email list, I started emailing people potential dates and that we were going to uh, consider between Christmas and New Year's a volleyball tournament. People returned opinions. People returned more people's emails, and, uh, and my, email miss, my email list just uh, grew and grew. Um, so, uh, when it came around, it looked like we were going to have about 85 people. And I, and I said, oh, sure, 85 people show up and maybe 60, or, you know, 85 people sign up and maybe 60 or might show up or something like that. But as it turns out, we got, we got the 85 people. A few people who said they were going to show up did not. And a few people who didn't say they were going to show up did show up. But we, we rounded around 85 plus spectators and, um, Spikes itself has three courts, so we, we were able to play four levels. We had A, B, Novice, and Novice Plus, and um, we, we played on all three courts, so it was a bit of a juggling act, but uh, everybody told me they enjoyed it, and people uh, right at the tournament were asking me, well, when's the, one, when's the next one? Are you having one next month? Um, are you having one to, again in March or something like that? So they all wanted another tournament very soon. I had some, uh, a couple of teenage girls asking me whether, uh, telling me that I should probably do this every month. Um, I'm thinking it would probably become a lot less popular. And we didn't make any money on this. This was just for fun, and uh, and it was a lot of work. Um, so I, I'd probably appreciate some volunteers in the future. But it was uh, it was definitely um, a great time. Everybody had a fun time. Went the whole day. The uh, the Spike staff, um, the uh, beach volleyball places staff, they were they were a little shocked at first, um, but they ended up becoming acclimatized and uh, they interacted with the uh, with the crowd quite readily. Um, I remember a pizza pizza guy came and carrying uh, the we we uh, with the extra money that we made, we bought pizzas for everybody. And when the pizza fellow arrived with all the pizzas, um, he took a look around. He was he was shocked. He was kind of <laughs> standing in his place. And uh, he went back out and um, to get the rest of the pizzas. Um, we offered to carry them in for him. He said, oh, no, 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 I, um, I'll carry them in myself. That's fine. Uh, because he, he, I think he couldn't believe his eyes. He just had to take another look and see what was going on. Everybody listening to this is uh, absolutely convinced by you that they have to try volleyball. So if they've never played before, they don't know how to get started. What would you suggest? Well, um, coming to one of our tournaments is the best way to get started. We, uh, the Bear Oaks tournament is a great tournament to get started at because I bring in a professional um, 
um, volleyball trainer who gives clinics for beginning volleyball people. Um, and uh, that's a good way to start off. But, you know, you don't even need that because if you go into novice, people will just coach you. They will tell you what you need to do, where you need to stand, and they won't be in your face about it. They will just be friendly and they'll, and they'll, t- and they'll show you what to do. And, uh, bef- and you could play for years in novice and never really master the game of volleyball and just uh, have a fun time as many people do. And uh, if you do end up gaining a a proficiency, you have the option to move up to the levels. So if you want more information about the Greater Toronto Naturist Volleyball Tournament, just go to bearoaks.ca slash volleyball, and I'll post links to a variety of websites uh, related to Whitethorn and other naturist volleyball opportunities. And that's it for today's episode, as usual. If you'd like to send us an email, please send us your comments, your ideas, your suggestions to naturistliving at bearoaks.ca or you can leave us a voicemail message at area code 253-369-9383 This episode of the Naturist Living Show was brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park Traditional Naturist Values in a Modern Setting Traditional Values means that naturism is more than just taking your clothes off It is a life philosophy with physical, psychological, environmental, social, and moral benefits. Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park strives to promote those naturist values in a modern setting that provides the amenities and services that our members and visitors expect. Free your body, free your mind. Learn more at www.bearoaks.ca. 